it comes to UFO stories, all roads lead right to Las Vegas, right? Recent revelations about a secret Pentagon study of UFOs raise many questions, including this one. Do government scientists actually have a piece of a flying saucer? According to a New York Times story, scientists right here in southern Nevada have had a chance to study what is known as a mystery piece of metal. And as George Knapp learned, it had some very unusual properties. When Nevada Senator Harry Reid and a few colleagues quietly found the funding back in 2007 for a serious Pentagon study of unknown aerial intruders, otherwise known as UFOs, one goal was to move the subject beyond the long shadow of the so-called Roswell crash, the controversial tale about a mysterious object that crashed in New Mexico in 1947. If you're here to find out where a little man they found in New Mexico after World War II where they're stored in some vault someplace or you want to you want to spend your time here talking about uh, flying saucers that took people someplace else. I'm not into that. When the New York Times broke the story in December and an organization called To The Stars Academy released Pentagon videos of encounters with unknown craft, a separate line of inquiry was also unleashed. Was there, as the Times reported, a piece of metal or material that could not be identified by scientists? For three years, a private organization named BASS, headquartered at Bigelow Aerospace in North Las Vegas, collected and analyzed UFO files and data on behalf of the Defense Intelligence Agency, or DIA. Company founder Robert Bigelow built special secure facilities inside his plant to house the program, its files, and according to news reports, a piece of unknown material, reportedly a compound with special properties. Senator Reid, for one said he's unaware of any such exotic materials. I don't know anything about exotic materials. Uh, I don't know. But, you know, there's been a lot of talk about that. The subject isn't new in UFO circles. The properties of supposedly recovered mystery metals have been debated for years. Rock star turned UFO investigator Tom DeLong speculated last year about possible anti-gravity effects of one alloy. Nick Pope, a former official with the British Ministry of Defense study of UFOs, said he believes such material does exist. But what about the point man for the Pentagon's UFO program? So now we can potentially warp space time in a way that allows us to go from point A to point B a little faster. Question is, do we need special materials? And you know where I'm heading with that question because it, you've been asked that a bunch of times. Well, I, I think special materials is, is important for anything you do. I, look, I, I build cars as a hobby, and I know that if I want to have a really strong transmission, I probably want parts of that transmission made out of titanium maybe not just regular steel alloy, right? So, so you, everything in life requires special materials. Lou Elizondo is the person most directly responsible for the public release of the now ubiquitous videos, the so-called gimbal UFO and the Tic Tac encounter. He thinks these craft are able to bend space and time with a technology beyond anything known on Earth. But is this technology dependent on mystery metal? And did the U.S. have a piece of it at the Bigelow plant? Sadly, I, I can't discuss that because I'm no longer employed by the U.S. government. That's something you would have to ask the U.S. government. But as I've, I have said before, um, when you are collecting information and signature data on anything, there are always telltale signs of how something works by its signature. Some who read the story speculated that the material must contain an unknown element. Not true, say those who worked on the program. But multiple sources have confirmed to us there was a weird piece of something at the Bigelow plant. Physicist Dr. Hal Putoff was one of the chief scientists for the Bass study. He confirmed last month that he had a look at, quote, unusual material that was very complex. Putoff implied it was engineered by unknown means, layered, he says, in ways that produced unusual characteristics. But that's as far as he would go. Lou Elizondo gave us one other tantalizing clue. You may call it material, you may call it metamaterials, whatever name to sure somebody wants to call it. The bottom line is if there's something left behind that can be recovered and retrieved, you absolutely want to recover it and retrieve it, just like a crime scene. George Knapp, 8 News Now.
No one would say on the record how the piece of material was obtained or where it was taken once the Las Vegas study ended. That was back in 2012. Now, if you'd like to hear more about the Pentagon Project, we have links and other materials on our website, lasvegasnow.com. Denise?